Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Oracle Open World 2015. Brought to you by Oracle. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Brian Gracely. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco at Oracle Open World exclusive coverage from SiliconANGLE's The Cube, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. Joe Mike host, Brian Gracely with Wikibon.com, our cloud analyst, and our next guest is Steve Dahib, Senior Vice President of the PaaS, Platform as a Service, and BI, Mobile Business Groups at Oracle. Welcome back to The Great. Cube. Thanks. Great to see you. Great to be back. Looking sharp as usual. You're Brian, right. I'm not rocking the pocket square, <laughs> but I'm trying. You, you, know? you look yeah. fantastic. So how's this Oracle Open World going for you. It's your first real big Oracle Open World. You had, had, had led the panel at the Oracle Cloud event a few months ago, but now yeah. this is the big stage. This what have you been up stage. to here at Oracle you Open know, it's World? It's incredible. This actually adds yeah, much bigger than June, though June was exciting when Larry got up there and talked about 24 new services. But yeah, this is actually my first uh, Open World. And it's, uh, I mean, it's actually nuts. I mean, the scale of this thing is, is pretty incredible. Um, you know, for me, like the level of customer investment has just been amazing. I mean, whether you see sort of the notes and all that, the work that they did sort of going into this, but really the amount of investment we have in terms of meeting with them and, and listening to them and, and sort of, you know, working together as we sort of transition so you, the you've cloud. you've been pretty much with customers most of the time? Most of the time. I've actually been, um, had the privilege of hosting multiple focus groups uh, that we've been conducting over the last couple of days uh, that will continue to host throughout the week. And these are some of our top customers. And it's just our opportunity to listen. You know, what's their cloud strategy? How do they view the different use cases? Uh, what's going to move to cloud first? How do they view things like hybrid, like security, like integration? And you know, the feedback has been incredible. So it's just great to actually have a, a, time, a chance to sit and, and listen. Yeah, four years ago, Larry Ellison kind of had that deer in the headlights look, and you can see, and since then, at Oracle Open World, it's been a cadence of marching down towards modernizing the database, modernizing the stack, Engineered Systems now has come up from, 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 the, from behind and really lifted up the performance. So amazing change at Oracle. Yeah, and Sean, now it's moving to the cloud. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Sean Price is saying, we're going to disrupt ourselves. That's what we're doing at Oracle. And so it's super exciting. So with that, with the focus groups, when you say those things to customers, when you have that kind of messaging, they got to be like asking some pretty tough questions. What were, the, what were some of the conversations that you can share uh, that you've had with customers? What's the common theme that you're hearing? You know, I think the, it, it's actually interesting. I, I think, um, you know, not tough questions, but I think we're, we're all sort of in this journey together. You know, it's sort of interesting when you look at Oracle's history, you know, we've been doing this for about four decades. I mean, through every single major transition, I mean, you went from mainframe to client server to the rise of the internet to mobile to cloud. And through every single one of these things, we've actually worked with our customers to help transition them. And, you know, cloud and, and particularly hybrid cloud is just that next transition. And so, you know, we've been listening for quite some time. Our products have been development for quite some time. So you've heard of, you've seen sort of the suite of products we've announced. Uh, 2,000 plus uh, past customers uh, signed up in just the last two quarters. And it's because we're showing up with the right offerings at the right time and we're working together to bridge forward. So you're the hybrid cloud guy. So we'll get yeah. to talk about that. What is the hybrid cloud and how does that fit? Or, or, or better, better put, how does the hybrid cloud fit into the overall, overall Oracle strategy? Because it's integrated cloud, and yeah. you got on-premise, and you got public. Yeah. I'm not hearing a private cloud or hybrid cloud offering. Yeah, you or know, it's it actually just foundational to our approach. I think, you know, again, with our experience, and um, we've had the experience of moving customers from one place to another, and we realize that sometimes that's a journey that's going to take some time. So when you think about the movement to cloud, um, you know, we, we get on, you talked about sort of on-premises versus cloud, and the answer is it's not an either-or discussion, it's going to be both. So understanding that, what type of workloads are going to move to cloud, what type of applications move to cloud. I might have a 17 million lines of code enterprise application that I'm probably not moving to cloud anytime soon, but there's other things I want to move to cloud. So understanding that these things are going to coexist, I think we took a very unique approach to the market to, to, to really help with solutions that span both on-premises with cloud and, uh, and in really addressing both. Uh, we, there's a lot of vendors out there that are sort of addressing cloud as a one-way street. You know, to me that's sort of a dead end. At the end of the day, it's more about building a bridge. You know, how do we bridge from where we are today with where we're going moving forward and understanding that that connection needs to be in place in for the, quite some time. Where in the stack are you guys engaging with PaaS and, and hybrid cloud? 
You know, it's interesting. It's actually at every layer of the stack. It's at every layer of the stack. I mean, when you look at architects, they understand that there's data and applications that live on premise. They understand that there's some that, that live in mobile, that live in cloud. Um, for database administrators, you know, when you get to that level, it's okay, how can I more rapidly provision and um, databases, you know, using the cloud? For line of business, so just so you guys know, uh, my background, I'm a three-time public company CMO. So I actually take a very interesting line of business view to this. And if you came to me and said, look, I have a solution that can aggregate sales you know, data with marketing data, with service data, with finance data, give you that full 360 view of the customer and do that across premise as well as my cloud applications, that's a story I'm really interested in listening to. So, you know, so even the line of businesses are saying, wow, you know, not only can you supply me all the software products I need, um, but you have a platform to enrich, extend, and integrate those. So that messaging is resonating with them as well. So even these focus groups, I mean, there's line of business, there's IT, there's executives. So we're getting a full range of participation across that stack. Yeah, when you're talking to these your customers about hybrid cloud, like, because there's a lot of definitions in the market, like you said, different companies have different approaches, different CIOs have different approaches. Yeah. Uh, this week is a lot about, it's Oracle applications, it's the red stack, it's the same in both locations. Is that good enough for them? I mean, do they feel like if I can get my Oracle applications to be hybrid, the rest of them I won't worry about because they're driving the business? Or do they want you to expand into new places? Do people want to migrate a Microsoft application over to yeah. an Oracle offering? I think it's it's both. I mean, so, you know, our, we've taken a unique approach to say that everything that you have on premise is the same as you have in cloud. It's the same hardware you run, it's the same software you run, it's the same protocols, it's the same security. So you get that leverage, you know, you get that unique mirrored coexistence where I can move workloads back and forth. But Oracle also understands that we live in a heterogeneous environment. So there's legacy applications that they might want to bridge to cloud, or there might be other cloud apps that they've purchased that we might need to, to help them connect. And so a big part of what we do is, is integration. So not only across our own stack, our own products, but also uh, third-party products. I mean, if you look at cloud, you know, so I have my Salesforce, my Marketo, my SAP, my Adobe, you know, my Workday, it's like, you know, wasn't cloud supposed to be easy? I mean, we're sort of like, you know, running smack dab into the problems we've had in the past. So for Oracle to be able to come in and uniquely integrate across all those applications um, with a platform like, like PaaS, and also provide our own solutions, I think we can drive unique value for our customers. What about the open message? Platforms of service, Amazon is one with that, but they're also not so open, they have an integrated stack. Integrated stack is what the customers want, because yeah. that's workload specific. What are you guys doing on that? Because DevOps is a big part of the cloud, certainly PaaS is like, a, yeah. it's the battleground we've said on theCUBE many times between DevOps and application developers. Yeah. So infrastructure should be completely transparent to app developers. It, it should, and, and that's something where you're, you're, you're spot on, especially with respect to app, app development, which is actually another interesting um, thing coming out of the focus groups, because every one of them are like, and I know Mark talked about this, You know, we just talked to one major communications company, He's like, I have a sign up in my IT department that says 100% of app dev tests is going to be done in the cloud which was really interesting. But in order to do that, it can't just be the Oracle apps. How do you address the window apps? How do you address some of the open source apps? And our offering today, as well as our roadmap, you know, contemplates all that. So, I mean, obviously from, from a Java perspective, you know, we have a majority of the development going on out there, but we realize there's different languages that people use, there's different types of developers. And so our solution, you know, contemplates all of that. So I'm getting a lot of DMs and texts and ask him about how they work with other clouds. Microsoft in particular, SQL Server 2015, SQL Server 2016. Customers have other stuff besides Oracle. Yeah. How do you guys address that? How do you integrate across a, a multi, interoperable, multi-vendor Yeah, I mean, there's multi-applications we can integrate against, and our solutions also contemplate integrating across multi-cloud. So again, you know, there, we, we realize that customers have multiple clouds. They might have a one, two vendor cloud strategy. They might have a cloud. I just heard today from a vendor says, I kind of signed up on this cloud, but I probably want to migrate off. Do you have a solution to help me do that? And so I think it's not only advantage, you know, advantageous for our customers, but it's also good for Oracle to be able to connect to other vendors' clouds. What's your take on OpenStack? I mean, OpenStack has been, um, seems to be a graveyard these days, but you know, a lot of investment has been built into OpenStack around pass, because that's been, I think everyone's realized 
that past was the was the was the part, but now OpenStack's trying to be infrastructure as a service. So how do you think about things like OpenStack and things of that nature? Well, I think if you look at Oracle, I mean, they've been very committed to, to the standards body, you know, contributing, helping develop around OpenStack. So that's just something that's in our DNA and we've been doing. But we also understand how can you innovate, um, you know, and extend beyond what might be available from like an open source community. And so we continue to, you know, innovate and develop there as well. Now, what, you talked about the number of PaaS customers growing. What does a PaaS customer look like to you? Is it, is it the SIs that are building on top of PaaS? Is it the end users that are building? What, what's that profile look like and what are they asking you for in the PaaS? Yeah. It's actually, it's across the board, to be honest. I mean, there are some major customers that have, you know, large IT staffs that are doing this in-house, you know? They have application developers, and they're looking to move that to cloud, or they, they're using, you know, backup as a service, or database as a service, or integration for their own use, so it's their own IT staff doing the work. And then I've met with, you know, many customers, there's many customers out there that are working through partners as well to, to have, you know, managed services. Um, but universally, it's, it's, it's the same thing. It's, um, I think it's the solutions that we offer. So, give me solutions for for you know for integration, for app development, uh, for backup, for security, for you know, and all those same things. Uh, you know, they're leveraging the same tools at the end of the day. So, emerging stuff like Cloud Foundry, competitors use it. Um, do you guys look at Cloud Foundry at all in terms of integrating with that at all? Um, we do. You know, Cloud Foundry's come up a lot, and that's actually something that we've looked at as well. So, I mean, any of these emerging um, um, vendors out there that have a solution that might make sense for us to integrate with um, for, to meet the needs of our customers, we're looking at. So you'll do kind of whatever the customer pretty much wants at that point, if it makes sense to Oracle. If it makes sense, yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I, I see you guys in, at odds with Cloud Foundry, but I think Cloud Foundry is an alternative to what you guys have. Cloud Foundry's playing catch up, although they claim some significant numbers. What's your take on that? Well, I mean, Cloud Foundry and Oracle don't really play well together, do they? Well, I, I, you know, Oracle hasn't been part of the Cloud Foundry Foundation yet. I think, you know, sometimes when you've got a huge installed base, maybe that's not the best play for you, right? It's not where you can get as many customers. Uh, you know, but Cloud, but Cloud Foundry is making a big push around Java. I mean, you talk to you talk to Pivotal, their big push is around Spring, and I think what it says is. You know, we talked to, about Java yesterday. I mean, Java is still a huge development platform. I think that's maybe the big takeaway from a lot of this. You're, you guys push Java; they're pushing Java quite a bit. Um, yeah. That's a big. That's a big. I play. mean, for us, I mean, obviously, um, you know, serving our install base is going to be, you know, you know, primary for us. But as we move to cloud, you know, we continue to attract uh, new customers. I think Mark had a uh, quote that says, you know, seventy percent of our cloud customers are actually new on the application side, and so we're attracting new customers. Um, you know, we'll continue to, to compete, and we'll continue to partner where it might make sense. How, about, sorry. Yeah, how do you address, so last night Larry made a statement, he said, I don't care what anybody else in the cloud charges, I'm gonna meet their price or beat their price. Uh, we had Sean come on and say, you know, we've gotta be transparent about pricing and all this stuff. Yeah. How, you know, Oracle hasn't necessarily been known as the most transparent pricing company, to be honest. You know, we hear this from end users. How do you address that, especially when you're dealing with a world where they might want to be charged by the hour or by the week, yeah. as opposed to a big ELA where you can hide all kinds of costs? Yeah. How do you guys address that, or what are you doing to be more transparent? Yeah. Well, I think that's actually part of being in the cloud business. So we understand that that business is fundamentally different. I mean, you got subscription, you got metered, those things work a little bit differently, so you have to have you know, very you know, fixed price, fixed contract, um, you know, really well understood transparent pricing, so I think that's part of it. And then from you know Larry's comments, I mean, you sort of you know when we were together in June, you know when you when you announce archival storage at the tenth of Amazon's price, um, you know I think that shows a commitment. I mean, Oracle sort of uniquely has a vertically integrated stack, so there's things we can do in terms of cost and economies of scale we have to pass that on to our customers. But at the end of the day, if we can you know help support at the infrastructure layer, we have all the layers of the stack. So you know for uh, you know for us being able to sort of monetize across all that or serve our customers across that entire stack is a, is a strategy of ours. So we're not just relying on infrastructure as a service, but we can, you know, work with Oracle them on Oracle environment, you guys have a great solution. I mean, if you're Oracle on Oracle, it's a great solution. Now what's interesting about this Oracle open world is this new open message, why I brought up Cloud Foundry, because you start to see Oracle start to lay out the, the breadcrumbs from the strategy standpoint that says, a little hmm, bit more open. We, could win the, we could win it all. Yeah. We could win the whole game by just focusing on our core base, which by the way, Azure's doing the same thing. Yeah. Microsoft, they're <laughs> it's all their install base. They're focusing on the core first. Yeah. Same with Oracle. But I think um, I think you guys are a couple years ahead of Microsoft at this point. So when customers ask you straight up, hey, how do you guys compare to Microsoft? What do you say? 
Yeah. Well, I think, you know, I mean, we absolutely respect Microsoft as a, in terms of what they're doing. I mean, and, you know, I think Larry talked about that the, the other day as well. So, um, but yeah, I think at the end of the day, when you sort of look at who might be the chief uh, competitor across all three layers of the stack, we do believe that's going to be Microsoft. I think when you look at things like platform as a service and, and SaaS applications, you know, not sort of like email and, and SharePoint, but, you know, those ERPs, the HCMs, those core things that you run your business on, I mean, that's something that Oracle has clear leadership on. And I think when you look at the database, when you look at the middleware, when you look at the integration, when you look at the BI or analytics layer, those are things we offer that just a Microsoft doesn't. Steve, you've been an executive in, in the industry for a while. You said four decades. Did I ask you the question, a hard question? Um, not, well, put you on the spot, that's not a hard question. But Sean Price brought up the point that Oracle's about disrupting itself. And when he joined the company, working for Mark Hurry, he's like, hey, you know what? I want to be in a company that's going to disrupt itself. And the answer overwhelmingly, the executive suite is, yes, Oracle's prepared to disrupt itself. Yeah. That's clear. So I got to ask you, where do you see that disruption happening? I mean, there's an old expression, you eat your own before the competitors eat your own. Yeah. And invent the future, don't milk the cow yeah. until it's dead, right? So like, where are you guys disrupting yourself in your view? Well, and then, in a positive innovation way. Yeah, and I think, well, from an innovation way, I mean, the fact that, you know, every single one of our products are in the cloud are going to be there soon, I think is a testament to our commitment to that. And we understand that as you move to cloud, there's certain, certain different pricing models and consumption models that differ from, you know, legacy, you know, traditional license business. So I think we full well understand, you know, that that's a transition. That's going to be a transition that happens over the time. You know, Larry, Mark, and Safra have talked about that, I think, multiple times on earnings call. But that's just part of you know moving forward um, and, and continuing to, to reinvent ourselves. I think if you sort of look at you know history of technology, there's a lot of companies that didn't make that pivot. You know, and Oracle's not going to be one of those. What, what do you think? We're sitting here next year at this time. I'm sure we'll have you back on because you've been a great guest. What, what do you think of we're, we're sort of stack ranking SaaS, PaaS, and IaaS from an Oracle cloud perspective? Which one's first and second in terms of revenue or in terms of growth rates? Um, well, I think our growth rates on passive, you know, we projected to be faster than, than, than software as a service. But I think when you, you look at the overall business, I mean, we continue to exceed in every layer of the stack. I think when I come here next year, I think we're going to talk about some incredible momentum we've made in pass. I think pass from a hybrid perspective is, you know, that that's probably a little bit longer of a journey. I think when you look at software as a service, you know, that's clearly, you know, or applications in general, that's clearly moving towards um, a cloud model. And I think when you look at the platform layer and the infrastructure layer, that's going to be a hybrid model and different customers are going to be different places on that journey at a given time. Steve, my final question. Tell, talk to the folks out there watching that aren't here at Oracle Open World. What's your message to them around your role, your team? What are you guys doing? What's the core message? Yeah. I think for my team, you know, it's, you know, and again, sort of being new to this was, you know, how do we help articulate our value proposition? How do we listen to customers, take their voice, and, and really line up our technology and our solutions um, you know, in a way that they understand, in a way that they understand meets their, their, you know, their business needs, as well as some of their technical needs? Our, our, our goal is to sort of bridge development with sales and provide you know, our team and our customers you know, everything they need to, to make an educated choice. How are you measuring yourself for this next year? When we talk to you next year at Oracle Open World, yeah. we'll say, how'd you do last year? What yeah. are the three things you're going to knock like down? like Mark uh, <laughs> talking in the back of my head. <laughs> at the end of the day, it is about, um, you know, success in the market. So how do we enable our sales teams to be successful? How do we, I think, through these past focus groups, there was a lot of follow-up in terms of how do we educate them on the offering? How do we help put a roadmap together with them to help them transition the cloud? And so I think, you know, having, you know, you know ultimately success for our customers and helping them so sales and cloud migration, cloud yeah. I mean, cloud at the traction. End of the day, that's what we're trying to enable. That's what my team does. Uh, good dodge there. I want to try to put you some key metrics. <laughs> say, you know, yeah, yeah. They yeah. tried to lay out hey, your bonus for you. I saw year. that coming a mile away. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I was coming in slow, isn't it? They're not well, that Mar slick. Well, Mar well, Mark Hurd laid a number out to fly by 2025 and put a Dennis out there. So yeah. A couple of years away. 100% of test and dev. So yep. uh, congratulations, all your success. Appreciate great it. messaging, great uh, opportunity. Yeah. For your team. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. Thanks. Okay, Steve DeHeep here inside the Cube on Howard Street. They're closing down San Francisco for Oracle Open World. 60,000 people. Go to crowdchat.net. It's rocking. Crowdchat.net says OW1615. Join the conversation. Go to siliconangle.tv. That's where all the videos are. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>